Hello, dear brothers and sisters. So happy to be back to share a word uh, from the Lord. I hope you guys are all having a blessed week. Thank you so much for your, your support. It truly means a lot. It's not only a support for me as a person, um, but the support that we get as brothers and sisters is a support for the kingdom of God to advance in his word, to advance in what the Holy Ghost is doing. So thank you guys for everything. Thank you guys for everyone that gives. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your support. Thank you for being here. Thank you for listening to God. The most important thing is to listen to the word of God and, and to obey and to receive what God is speaking. And I just wanted to tell you guys that I had a blessed couple of weeks. Um, two weeks ago, I went to a retreat. Like I mentioned last time, it was um, very nice time in the Lord. I got to spend the day with the you know, women from my church. I got to spend uh, time with my roommate, which uh, she's my friend. So it was just very nice um, taking the time to spend uh, and, you know, just hear what God is saying, the most important thing. Um, and then this past weekend, I was invited to go speak at a Spanish radio station. So that was a blessing with another one of my friends in the Lord. So it's just truly a blessing to see what the Lord is doing and how God is moving. So I just very blessed for that. And I wanted to share with you guys because you guys are, you know, here for the kingdom of God. And, you know, I just want to share what the Lord is doing. So today we will be speaking about the sinful woman. Um, that's something that God has been ministering to me about. So that's the word that the Lord wants me to speak on today, the sinful woman. And today's message is just a message of redemption or message of hope, a message of restoration of what the Holy Spirit can do in our lives. So we're going to be speaking about that. So we'll begin with prayer and we'll get right into the word. Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we come before you, Lord, Father God, and we just humble ourselves before you, Father God. We just put aside every distraction, Father God. We just put aside every heaviness in our heart that's weighing us down, Father God. We just put aside, Father God, not even put aside, Father God. I just pray that you would just remove, Father God, anything, Father God, any weight. You said putting away every weight that so easily besets you, Father God, and we just put away Father God, you said, cast your cares upon the Lord and he will sustain you, Father God. He will not cause the righteous to be shaken. Hallelujah, Father God. So we just thank you, Holy Ghost, for a mighty move, Father God. This time that we are separating ourselves, Father God, to hear from you, Father God. May you move in whatever direction you want. May you say whatever you want, Father God, that you just... Father God, have your way. Do whatever you need to do. Father God, you will get all the glory and all the honor. Father God, we thank you for every person that is here listening to the word of the Lord. Father God, I pray, Father God, that you will move upon their life. Father God, that you will answer their prayers, Lord, that they will get closer to you. Father God, that they will separate time. Father God, to seek you, Father God, and that, that they would just grow in the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And we just thank you for this word. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. So we're going to talk about God. And we're talking about God, and we're going to be talking about the power that God can do in a person's life, in a man or in a, in a woman's life. It's just so powerful to see what God can do when we allow ourselves to be ministered to uh, by God. As a woman of faith, as a woman of no background in anything of God, I didn't grow up, you know, in the church. I didn't, I, I did grow up in the Catholic church, but I'm talking about like in a Christian manner, in a Christian way where you know, you read and you pray and you read the Bible and things like that. I grew up, you know, doing, watching things that I shouldn't be watching on television has, you know, growing up and stuff like that. It wasn't bad. It wasn't bad for, I mean, it wasn't bad, like, you know, what boys watch, but I'm saying it was just like, you know, novella, soap opera, the things that um you shouldn't be watching. Because they affect the way you think, they affect the way you do you think as a woman, and stuff like that. And um, I just remember um, 
as I was a young woman growing up and watching novelas, my a lot of my mentality, a lot of my mindset, a lot of the ways that I thought um, I was taught by them how to behave, how to act, how to dress. And a lot of the ways that I that I did things as I became a teenager was from all those years of and mindsets of things there you know the things that we're do they're all building blocks building blocks of how we brought, were brought up a lot of the times the way we respond the way that we behave these are all things and patterns thought patterns of things that we have watched as a young person and everything that it's it's built upon that the way that we uh behave and the way that we act it's all built upon uh childhood and stuff like that. So as I was beginning to, you know, grow up as a, a teenager, 13 years old, and then you look back, right? And a lot of the things that I did, I nobody taught them to me, a person didn't, but I watched and I learned and I, you know, did those those things that I watched them do in the, you know, Spanish soap operas and the novelas. And I remember like, you know, I put them in, in into practice and they did work, but they only worked for evil. And that evil that you put out there to do, you don't really realize that it's evil. You just think that um, somehow you think you're being slick. Sometimes you think like nobody knows. And sometimes somehow you think like that you're going to, that it's, I don't know. It's just, you know, it's weird how we think that um when we have these ways of doing things that that they're not going to have consequences we think that nothing like you can do something bad and that somehow there's not going to be any consequences to it but there's always consequences to everything that we do when we are not doing them according to the will of god and obviously we always get hurt our heart gets broken we get used and abused and it doesn't end right. And somehow you, obviously when you're an unbeliever, you don't understand. And then it's the process continues. And then you just do the same thing, but you do it with a different person. You spend another few years doing the same old dance and it just, you know, you go to the next person and then it's the same, the same thing, familiar spirits, the same, the same consequences, the same thing, but it's just in a different person with a different person. And it, the cycle repeats itself. Five, th five years later or another couple of years later, it's the same thing that happens, but it's with another person. So thank God for God, because I know that if God wouldn't have, have came into my life, I know that I would still be out there doing the same thing that I was brought up doing. And it's the only way I knew how to do things. But, you know, God is so good that he gives the opportunity to everybody. Everybody has an opportunity to come to know the Lord. And everybody has an opportunity to, to grow in godliness. But not everybody takes advantage of that, um, of that opportunity. Because they are, um, they just don't want to put in the work. It's hard to follow the Lord because the world will hate you and you will have to be okay with the world hating you. You will have to be okay with being alone. You will have to be okay with being rejected. You will have to be alone by being secluded. You will have to be okay by not being liked. You will have to be okay by not being the teacher's favorite. You will have to be okay by just feeling the constant warfare because we are in a battle whether we want to um whether we want to admit it or we don't want to admit it we are in a warfare we are in a battle and it was so crazy in this morning because sometimes you think it's you right you think you're the problem you think i'm just not liked because of me and then somehow you just blame yourself it's me it's the way i behave it's the way i act it's because of my boldness it's because of this and this is because of that 
But then has this morning when I got up and I was reading the scriptures, there was a scripture that, that I, that I was reading and the scripture said that it was the time for Jesus, that he was almost gonna, that he was preparing because he knew that he was going to die. And then after it says to be, then it said that he was hated by the elders and the Pharisees and everybody. So you can imagine how God must have felt just walk Jesus walking this earth, just being hated left and right by the leaders, by the elders, by the greeters, by this, by the prophets, by whatever. It didn't matter, but he experienced constant warfare. So this morning, as I was reading that too, the, there was other scriptures and they just said, if you want to follow me, pick up your cross and follow me. Then he also said, oh, let me go bury my, my mother or my, I said, let, let me go bury my father. And he said, let the dead bury the dead. And then in another scripture, it said, let me go, let me go say farewell to my household. And he, and he said, for whoever looks back is not fit for the for the pearl to follow the lord so there is a there is a a price to pay for the anointing there is a price to pay to follow the lord there is a price to pay for the great calling of god but guys like it's so worth it like what God will do in our lives, it's so worth it. I mean, the Lord has transformed my life. God it has made me into a different person. He is literally, how the Bible says, from rags to riches. And I'm not talking about financially. I'm talking about spiritually. God loves us so much. And literally all that God wants is for us to just love him and obey him and to follow his will for us. Because he's so loving and so kind. I just remember before I knew the Lord. I remember I had so much hate. Because I saw all the way that this world was. And I saw the way that people did things. And as a kid growing up, I saw the evilness in the world. The way that people behave. The, the evilness that the people did. And I just got like I felt like this anger. Just because of the things and the ways of the world and stuff like that. And I just remember from watching all those things I, that I was just very, very mad. And I obviously when you're young, you don't know how to deal with your anger. You don't know how to deal with um, you don't know how to deal with anger. You don't know how to deal with yourself. You don't know how to deal with it. And I just remember like when I became like old enough, well, not legally old enough, but old enough where I started to just do whatever I wanted. I just remember you know, I would just drink just to take away the pain, just to make it go away. But the reality was that it was never enough. No matter how much, it just couldn't take away the pain. It just, it couldn't cure the pain because the pain is only cured by the Holy Spirit. So no matter how much I wanted to drink, no matter one after another, after another, it just couldn't go away because that's just not the way that, that, that things are done. Amen. But I just remember as I coming into the kingdom of God, I just knew that God had said, what do you choose? And I didn't understand any really too much of what he meant when he said, what do you choose? But I knew that I had a choice. I had a choice to go his way, even though I didn't really know him too much. I probably knew the Lord for a couple of months, maybe like one or two. I didn't know too much. I, I mean, the Bible's huge and just knew some, a little bit of it. But then he came to me and he said, what do you choose? And I said, God, thou knowest I choose you, Lord. And I didn't know what that was going to mean, but I knew what it meant. I didn't know what it was going to be regardless to the things of the Lord, but I knew what it meant to the things that I could not do. I knew exactly what it meant. 
I knew that the old man had died. I knew that everything from the past had to be done away with. I knew that everything that I've ever learned from my from the age that I was 13 when I gave my I, when I was 13 when I began the life of you know rebellion to the time when I met the Lord when I was 28. I knew from 13 to 28, I had to erase everything that I've learned. I knew that I had to uh, change the way that I was doing things. And I knew that that old man had to die. And I didn't know what the Lord was going to expect to me. But I knew that I and my will had died. So today we're talking about God and his healing power, right? So we're going to go to the scripture. We're going to go to Luke. Eight. Eight. Let's go to A42. Luke A42. And it says, But as he went, the multitude strung him. Now a woman having a flow of blood for 12 years, who had spent all her living on a physician, could not be healed by any. So here's a woman with an issue of blood, bleeding for 12 years. Take it however you want it. Take it physical. Take it spiritual. Take it bleeding, bleeding in your wounds, bleeding in your heart, bleeding in your soul because of pain, pain, bleeding in the natural, whatever. This woman was suffering and it says that nobody can heal her pain, not even the doctors. And she spent all she had for 12 years trying to fix her problem. It says, now as a woman having a flow of blood for 12 years who had spent all her livelihood on physicians and could not be healed by any, came from behind and touched the border of his garment. So this woman hears of this man, this Jesus man, this God, this Jesus, the healer. And she had faith. Amongst thousands and thousands of people who are making fun of Jesus, who are making fun of him because he doesn't look like they are expecting for him to look. He doesn't look like the king that they are expecting for him to come and look. But God is supernatural and he cannot be explained in the natural. A lot of people... People that are hit smart, they want to get Jesus and they want to put him in the box and they want to try to understand. They want proof. I want proof of the dinosaurs. I want proof of the giants. I want proof of the Noah's Ark. I want proof of this. I want proof of that. But my brother and my sister, faith is believing without seeing. You don't need to. God doesn't need to show you that he's real. All you need to do is believe. And this woman heard of him and she had faith. She said, I must get through the crowds and I must touch him. Because it says that, and because Jesus said that Jesus, but as he went, the multitude strung him. So they were all like, you know, t trying to get through. And it says, but a woman came from behind and touched the border of his garment. And like she just didn't like, she didn't have to touch him from the top. She just like literally his garment, not even Jesus, not his hand, not anything, but his garment, his clothes. It says, came from behind and touched the border of his garment. And it, immediately her flow of blood stopped. And Jesus said, who touched me? When all denied it, Peter and those with him said master the multitude strong and pressed you and you're saying who touched me but jesus said somebody touched me for i perceive power going out of me so god jesus is saying somebody touched me because i felt something from me leaving and when something was leaving from god that transferred to her and it healed her it says, now when the woman saw that she was not hidden, she came trembling and falling down before him. She declared to him in the presence of all the people and the reason she said touched him and how she was immediately healed. And he said to her, daughter, be of good cheer. Your faith has made you well. Go in peace. So I wanted to 
I wanted to talk about this scripture because just how this woman came to Jesus, that's how I was. Issue of blood. Pain that life had caused and that couldn't be taken away with doctors. I never went with doctors, but I sure did go out to the clubs and drank and drank and drank to take away the pain. But what happened to her happened to me. And she said that the moment that she touched him, her pain went away and she was healed. And the reason why I come on here and I share my personal stuff is because I, Jesus said, and they overcame by the blood and by the, uh, uh, they overcame by the, by the, by the, by the blood and by the word of our testimony. So there's power in the testimony of people and what the Lord can do in people's lives. The moment that I came to know the Lord, God started healing every area of my life. Whatever, this pain, this pain, this pain, this issue, this pain, this and this and this and this. And then he started fixing me and he started healing me. And those things that used to hurt me before, those things that were unbearable, those things that I couldn't deal with because that was too much and I needed to leave. And I needed to escape it. I needed to, to make it go away. It's no longer like that. I am so happy. I am so happy. It's been 13 years for me that I have been sober. Sober of everything, every way, shape, or form. 13 years of not drinking. 13 years of not smoking any cigarettes. 13 years of not smoking any kind of substance or doing anything but being sober. And being in the presence of the Lord. And that is my brothers and my sisters is what has healed me. This day, it is a testimony to the Lord that you don't need to be on Xanax. You don't need to be on Adderall. You don't need to drink this, smoke this, CBD this, whatever. You don't need that. You need Jesus. Jesus is a healer. And whatever is broken inside of you, God can fix it and, get, and heal it if you give it to him. And just say, like, I'm done doing all these things to numb me. Amen. We're going to go to Luke 736. Luke 736. And here goes the story of the sinful woman, which we we, I, we want to focus today. It says 736, a sinful woman forgiven. It says, then one of the Pharisees asked him to eat with him. And he went to the Pharisee's house and sat down to eat. And behold, a woman in the city who was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus was at the table in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster flask of fragrant oil. The same thing, woman, this woman hears of this Jesus that is in town at the Pharisee's house eating. And the Bible doesn't ever recognize her and says her name. The Bible just says a sinner, a sinner, no name, just a sinner. And that's how I was, just a sinner. Nobody needs to know my name. It just needs to say a sinner because that's exactly who I was before I came to know the Lord, a sinner. It says, and behold, a woman in the city who was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus was at the table in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster flask of fragrant oil. So she was a sinner. The Bible doesn't say what kind of sin she did, but we know that she did bad stuff. But no matter what she did and no matter how she got it, she, she got it and she got, she had fragrant oil. So that's all she had. She didn't have money. She didn't have this or that to offer. But she said, what can I, what can I bring him that he's here? He's in town. What can I bring him? What do I have that's of value that can be useful? And she said, and it says that she came with an alabaster flask of fragrant oil and stood at his feet behind him weeping. The same thing has the other woman. 
when you have so much pain and you have done so much crazy stuff to get rid of the pain, like both of these women came from behind because they were ashamed. They couldn't even stand to his face because of all the sin. And it says that these women came from behind, both of them, the woman with the flood of the issue of blood and this one, the sinful woman. And it says, and stood at his feet behind him, weeping. And she began to wash his feet with tears. And she wiped them with her hair. And she kissed his feet and she anointed them. So this woman realizes her sin. She realizes her lifestyle. She realizes all of the things that she has done. And she repents and she comes with her tears. And she cleans his feet with her tears. That shows a sign of humbleness. And that's what the Lord looks for when we repent. A lot of the times people say, I repent, I repent. But there is no true remorse of the, of the things that we have done against the Lord. But this woman realized, this woman realized, this woman realized her sin. She was at a point where she was done. She was done with her sinful life. She was done with her salvation. She said, what can I do? She said, I must go see this Jesus. Because I'm sure that all of the sin that she did was because she was a broken woman. Because when we're broken, we do a lot of sinful things. Because Not because we're bad people. Obviously, we're bad because we're doing bad stuff. But in our heart, a lot of the times, we don't really do it because we're evil. A lot of the times we just do bad stuff because we're broken and we're hurting and we're trying to heal and we don't know how because a lot of times we don't know the Lord. So we just do whatever we know how. We know how to be in the world. We know how to drink. We know how to get high. We know how, People know how to do lines. They know how to smoke dope. They know how to do those kinds of stuff. They know how to have sex. They know how to pick up on guys and, and guys pick up on women. They know how to go to the hotel and do those kinds of stuff. But there's a lot of people that don't know how to get to Jesus. So the, these two women, when they had the opportunity, they left everything and they said, "We, I must go find this Jesus. This Jesus, this healer that's in town. I must go see him face to face and I must just meet him they had faith that as long as they can meet him their life would be changed and be transformed and wiped him with the with the hair of her feet and she kissed his feet and anointed them with fragrant oil now when the pharisees who had invited him saw this woman he spoke to himself saying so here's a pharisee and when and when the Pharisee sees this woman like crying and and cleaning her 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 his feet of her tears with her hair and putting fragrant oil, he says, if that was really Jesus, he would know what kind of woman this is. This dirty, sinful woman touching him. That's what he says. If this, if he knew, if the, if this man, if he were a prophet, he would know who. And what manner of woman this is touching him. For she is a sinner. Number 40. And Jesus answered and said to him. Simon I have something to say to you. So he said say it teacher. And then here's Jesus talking. There was a certain creditor. Who had two debtors. One owed 500 denarii. And the other one owed 50. And, they, and when they had nothing to repay. He freely forgave them both. This is talking about Jesus. This is talking about Jesus and Jesus is saying, if I have two people that owe me, one owes me 50, one owes me 500,000, but none of them have nothing to pay me. And it's the same thing with us. We're both sinners. Whether you sin 50 times or whether you sin 500 times, you have nothing that can pay your way out for your, what the Bible says for the wages of sin is death. So the only way to pay for your sin is to die. You can't pay your way through it. But Jesus said none of them had their way to pay to it. So he's saying, which one? 
So he's asking the question to Simon. Simon is saying, if there's a debtor and one owes 50 and one owes 500, but none of them have money to pay. It says he freely forgave them both. It says, tell me, therefore, which of them will love him more? Which of the two sinners are going to love the, the person who forgave him more? The one with the 50 or the one with the 500? Simon answered and said, I suppose the one who he forgave more. And he said to him, you have rightly judged. Then he turned to the woman and Simon and he said, do you see this woman? That's what Jesus is asking Simon. Do you see this woman? I entered your house and you gave me no water for my feet, but she has washed my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair on her, with the hair on her head. And on her head, you gave me no kiss, but this woman has not ceased to kiss my feet since the time I came in. You did not anoint my head with oil, but this woman has anointed my feet with fragrant oil. Therefore, I say to you, her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much. But to whom too little is forgiven, the same loves little. So this is God saying that the people that God forgives much, loves much. We love the Lord much because we know our, all of our sin and we know how big and how bad it was and how just monstrous all the sinful nature is and all the bad and horrible things that we do when we don't know the Lord. And just as this woman came to Jesus, with all her brokenness and with all her sin and with her alabaster frask uh, uh, of oil to anoint the king's feet. Yet she has no name as a sinful woman. That's her name in the, in the book of the, of the Bible. Then he said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. And as I was reading this, obviously I see myself in the sinful woman that has loved much because I love the Lord with all my heart. But I, well, God also revealed to me is that as a woman, you have certain things that you bring to God. And as a man, God has given us special things, right? Some people has given us talent to draw, to paint, to whatever it is, how you minister to the Lord, you, you sing, you dance, you pray, you bring him, you bring him your, your, you know, your finances, whatever way you worship the Lord. But what the Lord revealed to me is that. The spectators will always have something to say about the way that we show our love for God. This woman came with a flask of oil, fragrant oil, expensive oil, all that she had. That's all she had. And sometimes what we give God is all that we have, right? Whether it's your life, your whole life, your surrender to the Lord your love for singing to him, like I mentioned, or whatever it is that you bring to the Lord. There's always going to be Pharisees looking at you and making fun of the way that you worship the Lord. And God said, forget them and dust your feet and go on to the next town. Because as this woman came with all she had to the Pharisee, it was ridiculed because she was a dirty, sinful woman. But to the Lord, he loved it and it brought him joy. And he even rebuked the Pharisee. And he says, you haven't brought me anything. You didn't bring me no water. You didn't anoint me. You didn't kiss my feet. You didn't do anything. And he's saying, but look at her. Since the morning I, I came in, she hasn't stopped kissing my feet. She hasn't stopped crying. She hasn't stopped worshiping me. But yet the Pharisees will always mock the way that we bring our gift to the Lord. So God is saying, don't forget them haters. Forget them haters that want to criticize the way that you worship the Lord. Amen. 
And then we're going to go to this story, which is a, the last story, the story of Mary of Bethany. Mary of Bethany is also one of the women mentioned in the Bible because she anointed Jesus, but the sinner, the sinner woman anointed Jesus feet, but Mary of Bethany anointed him a different way. So we're going to read about her. It says John 12, 1 through 11. And this is the new life version. It says it was six days before the special religious gathering to remember how the Jews left Egypt. Jesus came to Bethany from La where Lazarus lived. Jesus had raised Lazarus from the dead. They made him Jesus. They Jesus had raised Lazarus from the dead. They made supper for him. Martha put the food on the table and Lazarus was at the table with him. Mary took a jar of special perfume that cost much money and poured it on the feet of Jesus. She dried it with her hair. The house was filled with the smell of perfume. But this is this Mary. This is Mary of Bethany. says Mary took a jar of special perfume that cost much and poured it on the feet of Jesus. She dried it with his hair and with her feet. The house was filled with with the smell of the perfume. Judas Iscariot was one of the followers. He was about to hand Jesus over to the leaders. He said, "Why was this not special perfume sold for money and given to the poor?" He did not say this because he cared about the poor. He said this because he, he was a robber. He carried the money back and would steal some of it for himself, Jesus said. Leave her alone. She has kept it for the time when I will when I will be buried. You will always have the poor, but you will not always have me. And then we're going to go to um, Matthew 26, 6. It says, Jesus was in the town of Bethany in the house of Simon. Simon had a very bad skin disease. A woman came with a jar of perfume. She had given much money for this. As Jesus ate, she poured the perfume on his head. Okay, so this is the one that I wanted to talk about. She poured it on his head. When Jesus saw, the followers saw it, they were angry. They said, why was this much wasted? This perfume could have been sold for much money and given to the poor. Jesus knew what they were saying. He said to them, why are you giving this woman trouble? She has done a good thing to me. You will have the poor with you all the time, but you will not always have me with you. She put this perfume on my body to make it ready for the grave. For sure, I will tell you whenever this good news is preached in all the world, this woman will be remembered for what she has done. So this one that I'm that I'm talking about, Mary of Bethany anointed Jesus head. The other one is the sinful woman that anointed his feet. So for this one, Mary of Bethany, it said that she is the, the sister of Martha and Lazarus and that she anointed his head. And it says, and then Jesus, when they rebuke her, because like I was mentioning, the Pharisees will always say something about the way you minister to the Lord. So the other one, when she touched the, the, the ham, you know, the, the hand they were like people there right and they were saying something about because that woman with the issue of blood touched jesus and then we have the sinful woman that it says that she came with an alabaster flask and she anointed his feet with, with her tears and she wiped it and then we have mary of bethany and it says that uh, she came for the preparation of the of his burial and she anointed the lord but then we have judas saying why why did this woman do this it, that could have been saved and the the lord says leave her alone it says because she has done this it says it says first number 13 for sure i tell you whenever this good news is preached in all the world this woman this woman will be remembered for what she has done so because this woman went and she ministered to the lord and she prepared his body jesus said this woman will be forever mentioned and the gospels she is mentioned Mary of Bethany, because she anointed his head. 
So God wanted to talk about today about women and how God has the power to restore you. God has the power to change you. And God has the power to heal us because both women came and Jesus told both of them, uh, Mary and, um, and the woman with the issue of blood, he told both of them, go in peace. So after we come to know the Lord, we have to live in peace, knowing that our sins are forgiven, knowing that we are restored and knowing that, no, we will not be liked. The Pharisees will talk bad about the way that we do things. They will not be approving of the way that we do things, but it doesn't matter because Jesus has our back because just the way they came to, they just the way that they came for the woman, Jesus didn't allow them to because Jesus says, leave her alone. Leave her alone. He told both of the men, leave them alone. Leave them alone for what they are doing. It's like in the spirit realm, they both knew what they were doing. In the spirit realm, they heard the what the God wanted them to do. And they came and they did what God had asked them to do. But the other people were not in the spirit. And the Bible says that, that what we do is foolishness to those that are perishing. So those people that are not spiritual will mock you. They'll make fun of you. They'll make fun of the way that you do things because they're not in the spirit. So don't be led by people. Don't be led by people that are mocking you. Don't be led by the people that say you're doing it wrong. That's not the way you should do it because God is pleased when we are obedient to him and we're doing things the right way. Amen. So I will close out with prayer and then we will see you guys next week if the Lord is willing. Heavenly Father, we just come before you. We just thank you for this word, Father God of encouragement, Lord. We thank you, God, for forgiving us for our sins, Father God. Thank you, Father God, for all the women that were close to you, Father God, when you were alive and you were ministering, Father God. The women and the men, Father God, they followed you. They wanted to get everything that they could from you, Father God, a relationship. They wanted to be saved. They wanted to be delivered by the demons. Father God, that word suppress them, Father God. I thank you, Father God, that you're the Lord that healeth thee, Father God. You are the Lord that heals us, Father God. You are Jehovah Jireh, the Lord that provides, Father God. You are Jehovah Nisi, Father God, the Lord, my banner, Father God. I thank you that you're the banner, Father God. We set up a banner, Father God, against our enemies, Father God. They cannot come into our territory, Lord. What is for us is for us and nobody can take it. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Father God, I make intercession for all the people, Father God, that are that are fighting, Father God, the good fight of faith, Father God. I lift them up to you, Father God. I pray, Father God, that whatever problems, Father God, any of the people that are here watching, Father God, are going through or anybody in the world, Father God, is going through, Father God, I pray that you would have the victory, Father God. I pray for the salvation of the world, the people in the nations, Father God, that don't know you. Father God, I pray, Father God, that somebody will come and speak to them about Jesus and give them a Bible in their language with big letters that they can clearly see, Father God, that the Holy Ghost would show up wherever they read your word, Lord. And I just thank you, God, for this word. I thank you, Father God, for your word heals us. Your presence, Father God, is everything to us, Father God. We thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit to heal our hearts, Father God. We surrender every pain, Father God. We expose all the lies of the enemy, Father God, that has been told to us, Father God. And we thank you for these stories in the Bible of the women, Father God. There is such an example to our living as Christians, Father God. And we just thank you, Lord, for being with us, for healing us, and for delivering us, Father God. May your name always be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Bye. Um, if you guys are led to give anything to the kingdom of God, please do so at For God's Glory 7777 at gmail.com. I love you guys and I will see you guys next week. Stay prayerful and stay close to God. Remember to fast, to pray. Prayer is very important and to stay in the word. Amen. Bye. I'll see you guys next week.